This is the podcast, Your Spiritual Shift, with hosts Jennifer Matthews and Carl Gruber. Your Spiritual Shift podcast is a show based on their online program of the same name. That's where Carl and Jen guide you to remember and implement into your daily life the truth about who you really are, a child of all that is, your source. We invite you to join Jen and Carl for each and every episode as they explore in depth the teachings and principles of true non-dualistic spirituality and their practical application. You can live your life without the ego's lack, attack, judgment, and guilt, and thoughts of sin, and replace them with truth, unconditional love, innocence, pure joy, abundance, and a unity of purpose. Now, here's Jennifer Matthews and Carl Gruber with Your Spiritual Shift. Welcome back to the Your Spiritual Shift podcast with me, Jennifer Matthews, and my co-host, Carl Gruber. Together, Carl and I search, we discuss, and we dive deep into the principles of non-dualistic true spirituality and explain the hows and whys of implementing these teachings in a practical, useful manner in your everyday life. Today, we're super excited to welcome to episode number four, one of the icons of the community of teachers and practitioners of A Course in Miracles, Dr. John Mundy. Hi there. Thank you so much, Jen, for that uh, wonderful intro. Uh, we love doing this podcast. And Dr. John Mundy is the author and lecturer, the publisher of Miracle, uh, Miracles Magazine, and the director of the Miracle Studies Program for All Faith Seminary in New York City. He's a retired university lecturer. He taught classes in philosophy, religion, and psychology from 1967 to 2009 at multiple universities in the state of New York and even in some prisons. Many Minister for 55 years, John began serving three rural Missouri churches in 1961, licensed by the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ in, in 61, ordained also as a deacon by the United Methodists in 1970, an elder in 1981, and as an interfaith minister in 1988. He's also the author of 10 books. His newest book is A Course in Mysticism and Miracles. His previous book, Living a Course in Miracles has become a perennial bestseller and now exists in eight languages, which is awesome. He's also produced over 140 YouTube presentations on A Course in Miracles. And John met Dr. Helen Shuckman, the scribe of A Course in Miracles in 1973. Helen introduced John to the course and served as his counselor until she became ill in 1980. And I love this part. Maybe we'll have you do this at the end, John. Um, he also appears as, on occasion is Dr. Baba John Mundane, a stand-up philosopher, comedian. <laughs> that is so much fun. So, that yeah. is that is fun, and that would be really cool to see. So, well, um, I don't know. Everybody wants Dr. Baba John to come on. The last interview I did, the same thing happened, but you know, it's got to be kind of uh, spontaneous. And <laughs> yeah. you gotta, you Absolutely. Need, you need an audience really for that. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, an audience that you can look at, and you know, they're, they're going to laugh and appropriate points <laughs> <laughs> oh fantastic now john you've you've got so much experience and understanding about this modern spiritual guide which is called a course in miracles now before we go really deep into its teachings can you tell us a bit about how a course in miracles came into your life as a young man because you're basically right there at the beginning in the early 70s when you met the scribe of the course helen chuckman well um it I met Helen and Bill in 1973 at a conference in Chicago. Um, my book, my first book had just come out called Learning to Die, believe it or not. And I was there giving some lectures and Helen and Bill came to my lecture. And I was introduced to them after that was over. They didn't tell me about The Course in Miracles, but they did tell me that Helen had written like this inspirational book. And um, I, Helen was like this short little woman with frizzy hair and big glasses. And actually, I remember looking at Helen and thinking, isn't that sweet? The little lady wrote an inspirational book. Uh, it's probably, <laughs> got some, <laughs> probably got some good prayers in it. It does. And um, that was the first meeting. And then the next year, 74, I wrote a letter, got published in the Journal of Transpersonal Psychology, expressing interest and in being in contact with Fields. Uh, people who work in the field of psychotherapy and spirituality. And Bill saw my letter 
uh, told Helen he thought it was a call for her to complete the writing of the psychotherapy pamphlet. So after the course was finished, there were two pamphlets that came from the same sources as the course. One's called Psychotherapy, Purpose, Process, and Practice, and the other one's called The Song of Prayer. Uh, Helen had uh, taken these down. Um, she agreed with Bill that it was an opportunity to meet together. So I, I agreed to meet them. Uh, I actually remember the date because I looked it up. Uh, it was April 20th, 1975, in Ken Wapnick's apartment in New York City. Now, interestingly enough, I only lived a few blocks from there. So I actually walked over there. Uh, and Helen sat on Ken's daybed, uh, told me about the course, how it came into existence, uh, gave me a copy of the manuscript of the psychotherapy pamphlet. And I really remember walking home that night thinking that I think maybe the most important thing that just ever happened to me just happened, but I didn't know what it was. And it was about, um, a year and a half before I really began to understand the course. Um, there was a group of us, a small group of us, that started working with Xerox copies um, in 1975. And then the course was actually published on June 26, 1976. I mean, that was the first thing. We had a party and copies were handed out. And uh, Helen handed me a copy. and said, uh, I think you're supposed to teach this. <laughs> and, I, and I thought, how I could, I was working on a doctor at the time I was teaching full time. I was running a church in Brooklyn, New York. And I, I, how am I going to, what, half a million pages, right? I mean, a page, half a million words. And oh, yeah. I thought, how, how in cool. the world am I, how am I going to do that? But here we are, uh, 40 years, what is it, 45 years later. How old were you when you when you met Bill and uh, Helen? Thirty. Okay, so you were just a baby yet. Well, yeah, time. <laughs> <laughs> now it seems like it. Sure, if well, I meet somebody who is thirty, I would think that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, John, I find it really interesting that you started off as a, a, a minister in traditional religious settings. So, <clears throat> how and what motivated you to leave behind uh, the traditional religious setting to start teaching? Uh, non-dualistic spirituality and the principles of the ACIM? Well, I didn't really fully leave it behind. I mean, I was always, from the very beginning, I told my folks when I was nine that I was going to be a minister. And uh, when I was 18, uh, I actually got a job working at te in a rural Missouri church hmm. as a minister uh, while I was in college. So, you know, it's a really good job. But when I say it's a really good job, I mean, you think about this just for a second. What you've got to do if you got to sit down once a week and put your thoughts together in such a way that you can convey these ideas to a group of people, which will be hopefully meaningful and inspirational. I mean, and you get a check for it on after, before you leave church. I mean, wow. <laughs> that sounds like a pretty good job. Well, that's yeah, it's a pretty good job, right? I mean, it's like really doing a you podcast, get to only we don't through. get a check. <laughs> okay, well, I didn't know what you yeah. said, Carol. I, I said that's kind of like doing a podcast, only we don't get a check. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I got paid thirty-five dollars a week wow. in nineteen sixty-one. <laughs> it's it's gone up a little bit more over the years. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah. I was going to say back in the day that wouldn't have been too bad. But you made no. Actually, it, you know, the gasoline was like two dollars and fifty cents or something like that, or even less than that, I think. And, so but it wasn't, but it wasn't you did the same. make that switch from, from a traditional religion to, to teaching the ACIM principles, too, which is pretty interesting. Um, yeah, well, it, I always agreed with the course, even before I had the course. I don't know how else to explain that. I mean, mm -hmm. I, there, were, there were certain principles within traditional Christianity that I didn't agree with. But yeah. I wanted a job. I liked my work. And um, so... I just kind of was screwed around that, you know, and just went ahead and did the inspirational stuff that I could do about how to, how to live in the world. And how do we get along with each other and as yeah. gentle, kind beings, you know, that was the main teaching. And I love loving the, the, the older folks in particular. I mean, they just, the older ladies in particular, they, they just love having attention, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One Sunday, I remember I was at church, and you know how you stand at the back door, and people come out, and you're, mm. 
And there's a line of older ladies, and there was this, her name was Mildred Clark. She wasn't even five foot tall. And she was kind of trembling a little bit. And I thought, what in the world? Why is Mildred trembling? And then I realized that she was about to receive from me the only overt display of affection that she would receive from a man in the course of a week. And it's coming right in front of all of her friends, and it's going to be perfectly fine and wonderful. And, and just a little bit of attention. That's all it was, right? Wow. Yeah. And she needed that, of course. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so let me ask you, John, what's your, what's your biggest challenge as a minister and as a teacher during the chaotic times that we're experiencing in the world at the moment? Well, the same thing as always, which is uh, how to maintain peace of mind. Yeah. The, the, the foundation that was set up to publish A Course in Miracles is called the Foundation for Inner Peace. Mm -hmm. So if you've got inner peace, um, you got it. I mean, it's right yeah. there. So, but the peace, you know, how, how do I live with the fear and the anxiety and uh, maybe even the possibility of losing this body? And the Course in Miracles is very helpful on that in so many different ways, including the fact that well, it's emphasis on you're not a body. <laughs> you know? No. You, you know, I mean, that, the, the hardest part is losing people and having, that, having them be missing from our lives and going through the grief. And that's, that's the toughest part of all. It really is. Somebody uh, lost her mother recently, and she sent me a picture of her and her mother by her bed. Actually, she didn't die from COVID. She died from something else. And the mother had such a nice smile on her, on her face at the time, uh, looking up at her daughter. And I wrote back and I said, uh, glad for your mom, sorry for you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, uh, uh, yeah. My, my grandmother, she's um, 95 years old. Wow. And at the moment she's in hospital um, and she, she has been wanting to go for a while like sure. probably for the last year that she's been in hospital and oh, yeah. she, she kind of lost her faith for a little bit because God wasn't taking her. And she was like, she was like, why is he not taking, she's been without her husband for 20, 20 something years. Yeah. And so the last year she's, she's just been, I just want to go. And I'm, I, all of us are like, we're praying that, that her time will come because, of course. Uh, because she's, you know, it's sad for the people that are left behind, but at the same yeah. time, I think if you begin to recognize that, as you said, we are not body. Right. We, are, we are the soul within our body. And you start to recognize that we are the non-physical and um, that even when somebody passes over, they're still with us. Right. And um, that's hard for people to comprehend because you can't touch them. You can't. Um, talk to them as such and, and, and hear back from them. So I think that's what's really hard. And I had a friend who um, his friend actually lost both their mum and dad on the same day Whoa. Uh, in hospital. And um, it was from complications associated with COVID. Huh. Um, and, you know, that's tough. And I think that's, yeah, that's, that's one really of the hard. biggest issues in um, today's society um so yeah i get what you're saying john yeah of course well you know jen uh, mentioned uh, this in the show's intro and i i like this I, I like to understand this how can people learn to live and practice the principles of oneness forgiveness unconditional love into their daily moment to moment lives like taught in the acim uh, I, i'm really interested in how can people practically implement the these things that we're not used to doing on a consistent basis. You know, a, a lot of, uh, one of the lessons I think it's in the 200s in the Course in Miracles is let all things be exactly as they are. And that includes letting other people be who they are. That's one of the main things that the Course is teaching. You know, we're all the same here. God has no favorite children, that there is no such thing. And it's the way we treat each other that matters the most. So mm. our main job really is just to keep loving each other mm. through whatever it is that we're going through and to keep extending that, you know, because underneath, you know, we really do love each other and, yeah. and seeing how we really do love each other, you know, then let's not let get garbage get on top of it. 
we've got so much in the states right now there's so much differences going on between the conservatives and the, and the liberals and the left and the right and you know it's all a piece of insanity the course says that by the way it says it's an insane world mm. but it, this is not a place in time for us to be arguing with each other is to be looking for what's the same with each other and what's same of course is the heart the mind you know we're, we're all brothers and sisters here and <clears throat> no arguing i mean the course is anger is never justified the word is never you know it doesn't say sometimes you know we love if it said sometimes we could have debates of which times it was justified and which times it was not just it's never mm -hmm. justified you know this is not what you're looking for with it you're, you're looking for the love that's all you're looking for Dr. Yeah. Ken Wabnick, who was really the leading spokesman for the course uh, until his really untimely death seven years ago, uh, the main thing that he exuded was some kindness, just kindness. You know, that's, <laughs> that's yeah. the whole thing. The ego wants to win. The ego wants to be out there and, and, and finding problems with you. You yeah. know, it, it, you're the problem because the course is we have to have understand the psychology the psychology is that we don't want to look here no we don't want to think that the problem is inside me there's a line of course was you always hurt yourself first oh that's a heavy duty line mm -hmm. like when you attack you're really hurting yourself for, for one of the ways that you're hurting yourself is and you don't even think about it initially is you're creating guilt you're guilt inside you that you're going to feel guilty because of that because it's yeah. a sense of separation or division that you're creating and that's not going to work, you know? Yeah, and that's the thing. I think that in today's society, um, people have become so accustomed to judging others for, for who they are, for what they're doing, for how they're living their lives, and, and not realising that, that we are all one and that yeah. we are all, you know, we're all God's children. And like you said, he, he made us perfect. And so if we loved if we loved one another as we should. And um, like you said, I think deep down we do. Um, mm -hmm. And as they say, you, you point your finger at one person, there's four fingers pointing back at you. Right. So it's, it's important to understand that judgment is also something that, that we need to really get a hold on because the ego is trying to, is trying to protect itself. And it's, and like I said, it's trying to um, push the blame onto other people so that we don't have to look deep within us. Right. I actually think what both of you are saying is very comforting, comforting, very beautiful um, and, and relieving. And, and it is true that we project our guilt off onto somebody else thinking, well, by giving my guilt to them, you know, I'm going to feel better about things like that. But that's not how it works work. <laughs> in reality. Yeah. Work. Yeah. It doesn't work. more guilt for yourself. Go ahead. Yeah, it, then then you get like the guilt and you get shame and all these other all these mm. other um, other feelings surrounding it. So so John, you're the author of ten books, which is absolutely incredible, and these are based on the teachings of A Course in Miracles. Can you tell us a bit about these books and and out of those ten, do you have a favourite? Well, it's not that. I have a favorite, but the world has a favorite. Uh -huh. <laughs> by, by that, I simply mean, actually, uh, this book here is uh, my best-selling book. And this is the one that's in eight languages. And it's really just kind of a, a, copy. a, simple, a, copy. <laughs> a simple introduction to The Course in Miracles. Yeah. Uh, which was something that was needed at the time, which is why I wrote it. My other books, I don't have them. I wasn't planning on showing books. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But my other primary interest is mysticism and yeah. studying the whole what is a mystical experience is why do we have mystical experiences what do mystical experiences look like i've got two books on mystical experiences one called what is mysticism which is really kind of like a textbook about mysticism of the whole history of mysticism plus all the different ramifications of how mystical experiences come to us and what they look like etc and what we can learn from them so there's that and then a book called A Course in Miracles and Mysticism where I talk about how the two of the two of them combined. So Wow. Geez, yeah. you have been busy, John. <laughs> it's fine. With, without uh, without having read your latest books, I, I'm just I have a curious question. Do some people uh, mix up mysticism with uh, magic? Oh, of course. I mean that that happens all the time. 
or miracles, miracles and <laughs> magic mm. too. It's, it's not magic is is conjuring. Magic is a trick mm -hmm. that somebody does. They 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 do a trick so that you can't see what's really going on. Well, that's most of it. some magic that like the shamanic magic would be a different thing altogether. That's not what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, I remember I was once in Las Vegas many years ago, and I was driving down the highway. And there was this really big sign that said, come see Randy, I think it was, or something like that. The, the great mystic, what they meant was a great magician. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And I thought, no, no, ma <clears throat> mysticism reveals things to us. Magic hides things from us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a major deal. They trick us, right? And this is yeah. not about tricks. This is about waking up, actually. Yeah. Well, you know, the Course states that the power of decision is your last remaining freedom as a prisoner in this world. I now, know. I uh, was on your website and I see that you are now doing online classes about responsible decision making. Can you tell right. us more about that? Well, the Course places a great deal of emphasis upon our being responsible. Uh, there's a wonderful section, Chapter 21, Section 2, called Responsibility for Sight. Uh, very quickly it goes like this i'm responsible for what i see i choose the feelings i experience i decide upon the goals i would achieve and everything that seems to happen to me i ask for mm -hmm. and i receive as i have asked so we go through each one of those different stages and steps along the way looking at what that really means especially the last one the, the course is really clear and it's not just the course but a lot of spiritualities uh, are going to say that this world is a school or a classroom uh, or a mental hospital or a reformatory or a prison. No, it does say prison in, in more than one case, which is sort of interesting. Uh, but we're here to learn something. So mm -hmm. why don't we why don't we learn what we're here to learn? That's the main thing. We're, what we're learning, what we're trying to do is to figure out how to get out of here. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how we're we're trying safely? to learn who we really are, aren't we? We're trying to learn um, what yeah. we're what we're here for and learn the lessons um, and responsibility. That's that's incredible. Um, responsible decision making as a workshop that you're doing online. How often how often do you do that, John? Well, right now it's an ongoing class. I did it last night. I'll be doing it again tomorrow. Fantastic. Uh, on, online. Um, and then it's, I'm just continuing to do it until I'm running out of the topics, but I don't seem to run out of topics. And right yeah. now, last night we did our responsibility to each other, right? And how yeah. we're to help each other in, in the course of life and how to get through this world without negativity, without coming down on each other, without finding fault in the other person, that sort of thing. But then we're responsible for everything. We're responsible for our health and our finances and, uh, and, and I find that, I, I mean, I've got two teenagers. I've got a 16-year-old and an 18-year-old. Mm -hmm. And um, teenagers are very good at trying to push the responsibility onto others. Yeah, sure. And, and it's something that I, I am speaking to them about um, frequently because I say, look, we are responsible for ourselves in this world. And, um, and taking responsibility for where you are, for the actions that you take, is your first step to really expanding and to really um, to really coming into into who you are, into your oh, yeah. own. And I think that that's something that um, that people struggle with sometimes. Sure. One of the emphasis on the course, though, it's that the, the more responsibility you can accept and, and carry through, the happier you're actually going to be. Yeah. Because you're actually going to accomplish things. You're actually going to get things done. You're going to be responsible for yourself, for your making your way through the world, paying your own bills, you know, mm -hmm. which yeah. is a, something important for an 18 and eight year old or 17 year old to, mm -hmm. to be learning, right? Absolutely. 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 For when, <clears throat> when they move out of the home and they're not near, near us anymore, it's important for them to understand this. So well, yeah. um, absolutely. Yeah, and I could see uh, your teenagers go, well, mom, why should I take responsibility? You told us the world's an illusion. What's the big deal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's something they're still trying to wrap their head around. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a slow process. They'll, they'll figure it out in their own time. So, right. 
Um, so you're the editor and the publisher of Miracle Magazine. So what's Miracle Magazine about? Well, it, it started based on A Course in Miracles. They started it 35 years ago. Mm -hmm. And the amazing thing is that we're still alive uh, because a lot of magazines have bit the dust, especially with yeah. everything on the internet now. Uh, but we're actually growing. Uh, and, and we're growing in part because uh, I think there's more and more interest in, well, let me preface this by saying that churches are dying. Yeah. And they're yeah. dying very, very rapidly. Uh, in Europe, even worse here than here in the States. I have no idea what it's like in Australia. But uh, yeah, they're emptying the out. And one of the reasons they're emptying out is because people are looking for real answers mm. that they can make sense of themselves. Enough of rules and dogmas and laws and creeds and regulations and rituals. I mean, enough of that. You know, let's, let's figure out what's really going on. So things like A Course in Miracles, and there's other things now besides A Course in Miracles that are leading, leading us in the same direction of, about being responsible. And, and what makes the course really unique is it has the, the 365 lessons. So you do yeah. one a day for, and that, that continual practice on a regular basis, it begins to work. It begins to change things inside in terms of the way I see the world. And as I, as mm. I begin to see the world, I don't be, I'm not angry at the world. I'm upset with the world. A lot of it, as I said earlier, is just letting the world be what it is. And then I can fit into that just fine. If I start, start thinking that there's a problem out there, I've got a problem. And I'm the one that's got the problem because I see the problem. Right? It's not to say yeah. that there is a problem. No, it is. It's all, it's all up to perspe uh, perception as to, as to how we look at the world. And if we look at the world as, as a nasty, dangerous place, that's what we're going to experience. Yeah, sure. Whereas if we look at the world as full of opportunities and, and full of love and, and that, then you're going to have a completely different experience to somebody else. Right. Um, and it's very difficult to, as you said, let people be who they are and allow them to recognize this in their own time. And, and the thing is that in, um, in Australia, we're talking about the churches and, and the churches changing. And we're getting a lot more churches now that are not religion based, they're actually more spiritual based. Right. Um, so we have one called Real Life Church and that's, that's all about the, the spirituality side and sure. any religion is welcome. Um, so we got a lot more churches like that. And I do agree, even in Australia, I think that the churches are actually dying at, um, at quite a rapid pace here too. Right. Yeah. Well, so, but it's great that you still, that there is still support out there for people that are wanting to learn and wanting to embrace that spiritual side. Well, so, um, and more so. <clears throat> Absolutely. You, you know, John, I, I'm, I've got a little outline of questions that I'm following and asking, but this one's not even, and I'm really curious about this. Uh, a Course in Miracles teaches, in reality, there's only one mind. I mean, we have 8 billion bodies on, on the planet Earth, but there's only one, uh, one mind. How can somebody who, especially now where the whole world is all about separation, six feet apart, blah, 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 and, and everybody feels sp uh, special and unique and separate, how can the everyday person wrap their mind around there's only one mind? Well, right now, you would appear to me to be one body. Mm -hmm. And that body would be made up of uh, far more than 8 billion cells. And somehow or another, they've got to be in cooperation with each other. And they've mm -hmm. got to be, and the more perfectly they're in cooperation with each other, yeah. the healthier they are, the healthier you are as a, be as a being. Now, that's just a, an illustration of taking a being. Now, the minds have got to work together, too. And, and the more that we can work together with our minds, then the better things are going to really be. The thing is not to be finding problems with each other. It was, I was watching a show on Sunday evening and the person that was doing the talking was talking about our enemies. He was talking about China's our enemy, or Russia's our enemy, Iran is our enemy. Yeah. I thought, no, this is not really the right way to be thinking about this because as long as I'm seeing enemies, if I got an enemy out there, then that's something that I'm gonna want. I want I, we need to get into a greater cooperation 
with mm. these folks and, and coherence and communication. And once that begins, we are actually codependent. We're codependent upon each other. And the more we can recognize that we have this kind of inter-codependency, which can be filled, we can meet each other's needs, then we're going to do fine. But that's what this, this one, it's a mind that is in cooperative and compassionate. It's all seeds. Yeah. <laughs> that was a perfect analogy. You know, we're one body with 8 billion cells that have to yeah. work together to be healthy. I mean, as soon as you said that, it just made it clear to me. That was beautiful. Thank you, John. Yeah, it's a good way to explain it because because it's so true that um, that our bodies are actually quite miraculous the way that they're actually built. Oh, really? In 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 that all of this has to work together, and if it right. doesn't work together, then we end up with with disease and we end up with other things happening in our body. Um, so and the our consciousness is, is exactly the same. So the 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 more that we work with each other, as you say then the healthier our, our planet and the healthier all of us are going to be. Sure. Absolutely. Fantastic. Good way, good way of putting it, John. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, so, I, no, no, yeah, go, go through. Through. <laughs> I was just going to say, um, you've also got quite a presence on YouTube with your channel with over 3,500 subscribers. Tell us a little bit more about your channel. Well, actually, things are changing with regard to that. Um, okay. I started doing lectures in New York City back in 2013, once a month, they were called Miracles in Manhattan. And there would be two sections. I would, it went for three hours. So there'd be an hour plus and a break and an hour plus and a break. And those were all filmed and they were all put on YouTube. So that's how we, that's how we got 150. <clears throat> but COVID put an end to that because, right. you know, we, we can no longer, there's no longer people meeting and sitting there in an audience. It doesn't work like that anymore. So that was our last one of those was in March of last year. And then in April, I realized that we were coming up on Easter and people couldn't go to church. And I'd be nice if we could do something. So I got a bunch of other Course in Miracles students and teachers to come on with me. And we put together an Easter, two hour Easter. So I think it was even three hour Easter service because mm. we had to have a, a, a social time after and 800 some odd people signed up for that right so wow. then i thought well this is really pretty good we got 800 people and there's a lot of good teachers out there so i'm I, i'm doing what you guys are doing by that i mean i set up it's called sunday with monday so it's on sunday <laughs> so i'm that. still still, <laughs> still on sundays you know for 50 some years now maybe 60 years this year wow of being present on a sunday and doing a kind of a, a service Except it's not a service, really. It's just it's talking to somebody who's deeply into either the course or another form of non-duality that they're that they're talking about, and we're getting mm. a nice nice attendance on this. So Fantastic. that's it, and we can bring in some music, and we can do some meditation, and we can yeah. do some chanting together, and a few other things like that. Even though it's all right here, it's all online now. And it's yeah, going to for a while. And a lot, and a lot of people I see, um, some of my other minister friends, um, they do the same thing, and they do um, services online, which is fantastic. Um, and so, do you do it through Zoom? Is that how you is that how you do your services, or is there another platform that you use? No, I'm using Zoom. All through Zoom. Zoom's yeah. doing well in this time, aren't they? <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's it's, it's really remarkable. I mean, the, 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 this came, this was here already as a platform for us to use. Yeah. When just, and I had already started doing some things on Zoom, uh, but not a lot. And then all of a sudden, it's like, I'm on a lot now. And that's yeah. well, there's an interesting and, thing that's happening is I used to travel a lot. I used to airplanes and rental mm. cars. That was a very expensive process. And all that expense has gone away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course, we're not going to hug each other, but... Uh, yeah. Well, that's the benefit is that in today's society, and, and if, you look at, if you look at some of the positive things that have come out in the last year um, oh. with, with the COVID crisis, there has been a lot of amazingness. Oh. Um, the, you, can, you can feel the consciousness expanding. You can feel yeah. people starting to really delve deep and understand themselves. And you can see relationships changing in people's lives. Right. Um, whether it's relationships that are staying together, whether it's relationships that are going, okay, our time's up. 
Um, but they're starting to recognize things and having platforms like Zoom yeah. um, that you can still keep in touch with everybody throughout the world yeah. Yeah. is pretty incredible. It is. That we have mm. that ability. Yes, it, it's like you're in Australia right now, right? Mm -hmm. I am. Okay, so you're in Australia right now and we're talking together as though we're in the same room. Yeah. At the same time, it's like, what happened to space time? <laughs> Exactly. It's a real <laughs> it doesn't happen. <laughs> and one thing I like it one thing I like about oh sorry Carl. One thing I like about Zoom is um like I do even all of my course videos and that that we record is done on Zoom because you can record and it's it's clear and um yeah. the audio is great on it. And yeah. so I think that I think that if you can start to appreciate all of the good stuff that's that's come out and not focus so much on everything else, then I think, um, yeah, I think we can be happier in the long run. What's amazing, I think, is that <clears throat> there's, there's anything that you want. If you yeah. have a topic that you want to do, the topic, you know, just you type it in and there's somebody talking about how to sprout broccoli seeds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's there. Somebody's doing it. <laughs> so and you go, if, if you're doing Sunday with Monday, do you post uh, the Zoom recording on your Facebook page or on your website? How can people? Control? Well, actually, we're we're just beginning to to put them on to to YouTube uh, live. Oh, so, I mean, they haven't been there before. We just did a couple. We just put a couple on the, this last week. So. So how do so, how do people so, sign up to go to your to go to your service? Well, keep in mind I had the magazine. Right already. Yeah. So we had a database of, mm. of you know like twenty six uh, twenty six thousand names, okay. and of that about eleven twelve thousand emails. Mm -hmm. So we just let everybody know about it. Yeah. That we've been building for the last thirty years, mm. and so right away. And now, now with every new guest I have on, we get new people mm -hmm. because yeah. that that particular guest has got a list, right? Mm hmm and yep. it just multiplies it just multiplies so it just keeps growing so right. so if if our listeners decided oh i really i really love this john guy and i'd love to go to one of his services how would they be able to actually sign up for it the easiest way is to go to our website which is mm -hmm. miraclesmagazine.org miracles or just type my name in on a zoom on a google just type my name on google <clears throat> and that will yeah. lead you to to the website and to whatever else it is that we're doing. It's very, very simple, actually. It works real well. So. Yeah. Well, John, we know that you're you're busy. I know, I know you have another interview coming up, but uh, I'd like to uh, ask one more question here. You know, humanity right now seems painted into a seemingly inescapable, seemingly inescapable corner of fear and uh, separation. And here we're talking about all is one, unconditional love and forgiveness. So uh, where, where do we go from here? I, I literally hear all of humanity shouting, help! What do we do? Well, the first thing is just to remember that our main job is to love each other. And our yeah. main job is to love each other through whatever is going on, to not be attacking each other, to not be angry with each other, to be as cooperative as we possibly can be with each other. And uh, first of all, certainly to keep ourselves healthy so that yeah. we can be here to, to do that kind of work that needs to be done. Uh, and I don't have to tell you how to do that because <laughs> there's plenty of information on YouTube. You know, you yeah. do, just because somebody's talked about all the things we need to to do to keep ourselves healthy physically and also sane. In terms of the course, is very clear. It says it more than one time. This is an insane world, and it is an insane world. It's always been an insane world. All right. So how do we maintain sanity in an insane world? You can do it. Right, yeah. you can do it, but you got to practice certain principles. That's why the course is so helpful because that's why the 365 lessons in the course is leading you somewhere as you go from step by step. You're not always clear where it's leading you, but as I said earlier, it's leading you to the peace of mind, actually, to the point where it doesn't matter what happens. And I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I mean, if I lose this body, I'll lose this body. It's mm. okay, it's okay, you know. <laughs> yeah. This is not the any. We're all going to lose it anyhow. It may be twenty or thirty years from now, or it may be two years from now. But whatever it is, it's okay. 
the, the, the body is the ego's chosen home. We have a yeah. tremendous connection between the ego and the body. The body, the ego thinks that it is the body. And that's why the ego is scared to death. But everybody mm. who's had a near-death experience will tell you it's something to be frightened of. In fact, this, I had a, a, a most popular one that I've done so far was on near-death experiences, right? Yeah. And uh, because people really want to hear about that. And any, everybody that's had a near-death experience, they don't want to come back. <laughs> you no, know, personally, I... they don't want to come back. Nobody wants to come back. And they only come back for one or two reasons. One is because there's something they've got to do, like they got to take care of a kid or something like that, or they've got a mission that they have to perform. And the mission very often is, uh, do you know Anita Moore, Johnny's Dying to Be Me book? Yes. Yeah, beautiful yeah. book, beautiful lady. Beautiful, right? Well, her job was to come back and tell us mm -hmm. about what yeah. happened. So you know, it, there's a mission that has to be performed, right? So they yeah. come back to fulfill the mission, and the mission is always a joyful mission. And to tell you things like, well, there's nothing to be afraid of, folks. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. I think I think the fear of death is is one of the biggest fears that are out there. Oh, because sir. people don't because people don't understand what um what is actually available on the other side and what um how beautiful from from what the people that have actually come back to to tell us um says and um and so so fear is everything's wrapped up in fear at the moment. What is, what is a couple of things people can do um, to help to, I suppose, trust and, and not fear that um, what's going on in this world at the moment? I know, I know loving each other is, is one, of the, one of the first ways to, to combat that. Um, but, yeah, it just seems to be something that's really, you know, people are fearful of getting sick and they're fearful of what's happening in the world over in the, over in the States and in uh, Europe with the riots and that that are going on um what can what can someone do well i think the primary thing is to to get as centered as you can possibly get centered inside yourself yeah uh, to work on trying to establish a quiet mind to mm. have some sort of meditative uh, practice that you perform or something like a meditative practice it might be meditation it might be some yoga and meditation combined mm. or something like that or chanting and meditation combined or anything that you're doing like that which gets you down to this sort of nicely centered place where you're okay, you're cool, the world can be as crazy as, as, as it's going to be, but don't let anything take your peace of mind away from you. That's one of the main things that I think yeah. I tell people is don't let anything take your peace of mind away from you. If you let something that somebody else is doing take your peace of mind away from you, then you let that happen. And there's yeah. no need for you to let that happen. You're in, who's in control of this mind, right? You're yeah. in control of it, right? So actually the whole course is a great deal about mind control. I mean that in a positive sense. It's getting in control of our mind so that we're not crazy, so that we maintain sanity throughout. To make yeah. And I, like, and I like the saying, um, what other people think of you is none of my business. Uh, think of me is none of my business. That's true. Um, because the fact of the matter is we can't change how people feel about us and we can't allow other people's actions and other people's moods and, and that to affect how we feel, to affect what vibration we're in. So, um, yeah, so I totally agree with what you just said, John. That's fantastic. I think you were talking about responsible decision-making, weren't you? Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> totally. <laughs> We are talking about responses. Absolutely. Well, That's Jen, fantastic. We're lined up here, so just mm -hmm. wondering, how can people, uh, if they want to get in touch with you, how can they do that? What's your website, and is that the best way to do it? Yeah, that would be the best way to do it. It's just miraclesmagazine.org. Or again, okay. just type my name into Google. I mean, it's that incredibly simple. Hmm. Yeah, I know. We that. once again, we are so lucky with with the um, modern age of the internet. And I often yeah. say to the kids, I say, look, you, you guys are in an age that the opportunities are endless. Oh, they um, are. Which wasn't available 30 years ago. So, um, yeah, so we're pretty blessed with that. Now, Miracles Magazine, uh, is that a print magazine? Or is it, it an it online is. one? It is but print? Both. It's both. Okay. I, mean, um, I started off it, but 35 years ago, there was no internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so is that, um, you haven't hit Australia yet? or I have what, um, you say? 
You haven't hit Australia yet with Miracles Magazine? Oh, I'm sure we, we may have a few subscribers. Most of the subscribers that we have are that are overseas, get it digitally. Hmm. Yeah, it it's, costs it's a great cheaper. deal to send it across the ocean, you know. Yeah, so absolutely. It's, it's to get. Although we, there are a few people that are in England and a few other places that get real copies. But then we yeah, have to I love, I love stuff. I love physical stuff in my hands. Yeah. Um, so I think I'm going to go on and, and take a look. So yeah, fantastic. That. Yeah, it's nice to Thank have a display so on your coffee table or in the bathroom. Yeah. Or, someplace totally well thank yeah. you so much for being with us uh, today welcome. john it has been great to chat to you yeah, and you. um you you have an awesome rest of your day will do <laughs> thank you, guys you john. Thank, pleasure. Pleasure. Thank, you. thank you thank you dude. nice to see you again and keep doing the beautiful stuff that you do that it's making a well, fantastic difference in the world thank you there's nothing else to do <laughs> <laughs>